Welcome back, I'm The Launcher. On this video, we're gonna go back to the Rolex store. I'm very hyped to show you. And uh, before I hop you into it, I'm gonna do it right away. I just wanna keep reminding you of the Chanel chain giveaway. I'm gonna be giving out this chain as soon as we hit 1,000 subscribers. If you wanna be entered, there's the four steps in the description below. I'll add you into a chart. And uh, at, once we reach 1,000, I will uh, draw from that chart. So first flipping ourselves around, I did go to this store first. Normally I flip this store, so there's not a lot of footage in this store. Uh, as you can see that this is the Platinum uh, Day Date, one of my favorite personal watches. And this watch actually in between the links, they use ceramic, I found out. Uh, so they actually don't uh, go together and uh, clink together. They don't do that on the regular one, but on the Day Date they do. And it is a beautiful, beautiful uh, piece. The blue dial is absolutely gorgeous. And it's 40 mil, so it's the big one. They're asking 62,000. Uh, I believe that's what they're trying to get. Now, this one is not on the actual website, so I guess you can negotiate a bit uh, with your authorized dealer. So depending on uh, you know how long you've been a client for and how long you've been around. So uh, expect to be in the 60 range for that piece. It is extremely beautiful. Now, uh, the last piece I did uh, get, oh, the other ones are mostly uh, in my old videos. There was another 36 they had, uh, but this is the most uh, important I wanted to show you. This is a rose gold uh, Datejust 41, but as you can see, that dial is, uh, it's the salmon, I think, pink. That's what I called it. They had a special name for it, they told me, uh, but I forgot. But it's like a salmon dial. Very, It's a little hard to film because of the lighting in there. Uh, but as you can see, it's factory diamond. So that's also a pretty hot watch, but it's two-tone, so it's not as hot as it would be with uh, steel. So it is a beautiful, beautiful piece, though. And uh, that's definitely my second favorite in the shop. Now, this is the Tudor. It's also connected with it. And I just want to show you, this. they have black bays in stock. They have the blue. They actually, the first day they opened, they were given a blue full black bay. And I had the chance to pick that up at retail. But something about uh, the Black Bay, later on, I really love the Black Bay, but later on I realized I can't buy a Black Bay because it's not a replacement for a Submariner. Submariner is a classic watch, and people go and they say, wow, it's so expensive, the Submariner, I could just buy Black Bay. No, you're not getting the same quality. It's great. I love Tudor as much as the next person, uh, but these watches will not be in demand like the Rolex. It could be good and bad in some, some ways, but I also think that uh, that it's not a replacement, and that's really the issue here. So also, there's a lot of inventory. Uh, the, I think Rolex is not one of the, the – they don't treat Tudor like they do with Rolex. They'll make a bunch of Tudors. It's not something – it's a mid-range brand, something like Omega. I feel like I put Omega in uh, that category. And no, it's not that good because Omega makes fantastic movements in-house too – uh, just, but I, I think the finishing and quality is around the same in, in that area. So I think Tudors are great, but just make sure you're not buying it because you want a Submariner. So going to the next store, I spent an extremely long time here. I just was talking to the actual uh, employees and they were very, very helpful, uh, the sales associates. And uh, I, I just asked a few questions about modern. Uh, as you know, on my channel, most of my reviews are, you know, vintage pieces and everything like that. But modern, I'm not that uh, – I'm into, of course. Uh, I see them, but not as much as you see vintage because there's they've been out forever. So uh, I, I was going uh, through them. Now, I want to mention that this is the third time I've had this. So normally I glance over the watch uh, the second time just because I already showcased it. But this is a factory diamond uh, yacht master on uh, Oyster Flex. They're asking uh, – I found out the price now, 42000 so I thought it was a lot higher, but I guess the Oyster Flex would um, make that price down because you're not paying for all that gold. And that's why I put it in. So I want to show you that you can buy a factory diamond face, bunch of diamonds, D flawless as Rolex uses, and a rose gold case with Oyster Flex for around 42000 retail. I don't think that's a bad asking price. I think that's really, uh, you know, it's a not a value prop, but it is a beautiful, beautiful piece. And it's something you don't see on an everyday uh, person, especially with the day date being 62,000 and the yacht master at this factory ice only being 42. So I wanted to mention now taking a look at the actual sport models. So there's two, and I know I showed this before. 
But I'd also want to mention that this is, of course, the factory uh, Diamond Leopard uh, Daytona. They also make it without diamonds on the lugs, so that there's two options. But it looks like something Rolex would never make, and that's what's appealing about uh, this watch to me. And then, of course, we have the 35 uh, Yacht Master on the second uh, side. I also noticed that crown is stainless steel. Uh, I didn't ask the uh, sales associate about that, but I thought that was very strange for a two-tone watch to have a stainless steel crown. I don't think that's in any other modern uh, watch out there, a Rolex, that you buy and it has a stainless crown. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but I also want to mention that this piece has been there a while. You've seen it on the last uh, three videos I've done with uh, going to these Rolex stores. But uh, he told me the first day they got in uh, the first one, this is the second one they got into the store, it was sold. So it's very, very cool that this piece did sell. And there was, I think this watch will go up extremely in value. I don't know to rainbow levels, but it is a very, very cool watch. And to see that's factory, that's 74000 just so you know. Uh, and it's an expensive piece, but it, I think it's something that might appreciate in value. It's pretty neat that Rolex would make something uh, like that. So now I just want to show you there's another 41 two-tone at this Rolex ID, but this is yellow gold. So they slightly make the retail more on a rose gold, but it is a beautiful piece. Same sort of dial, a little bit different lighting. I think it's more towards a champagne, but it, this dial is not champagne though. It looks more like it on camera, uh, but it's definitely not. So it's a, it's a rosy type of dial too, uh, with factory diamonds. Both of these I have to mention have factory diamonds in the last one too. So showing you the rest of the case here, um, mostly women's, they did get a lot of 36s in, and I will showcase that uh, as the other store did. So I think it's uh, in the region, maybe Rolex sends them. I don't know uh, exactly how it works. It's they, The ADs actually don't know either. Uh, but going through here, you can see uh, these are 36 men's. That's uh, a blue dial, two blue dials, and that's an anniversary right there. So that is a beautiful, my, my personal favorite a dial but sadly that's a factory diamond dial a beautiful beautiful piece though and uh they make them all with factory diamonds now so if you want to go and buy an anniversary dial from an ad it is possible but you will be have to be paying for factory diamonds which is a lot of money and uh i i don't think i just not even the price increase for the factory diamonds is my thing it's the actual aesthetic i'm not a fan of rolex I like the sport uh, line. Even the date just has some sporty elements to it. But when you add diamonds into it, you make it a piece of jewelry. And I'm not a fan of that. And I think most of you are not. So going uh, from these date just to the Daytona. Yes, a Daytona. So the Daytona, this is not actually in the store stock. So the story with this and why I actually put this in uh, the video. So you're not getting mad at me for clickbait. As you can see in the background, I'm still at the Rolex uh, official dealer. The guy came back. So he bought the stainless steel Daytona at this retail store. I don't know how long ago. It's before I started making this series, much before. So I think around four months ago, five months, to, up to a couple of years, uh, wh wherever it was. That's, uh, but he still came back, and he's buying a Datejust. So the story, how I actually ran into this, was I was on the other side of the room, and he, you know, wanted to buy a date chest. He was telling the, I overheard, he was telling the sales associate, he's never bought a date chest before. And I said, wow, that's a really nice watch. Very cool. And I was, you know, congratulating him and everything. And he says, yeah, I bought, you know, OPs and everything. And I didn't see what he had on the table because he had another watch he took off to try on the date chest. And I came over and I said, whoa, that's a Daytona. And he says, yeah, when you said I'm buy, you know, that's the greatest watch ever. Uh, he says, I thought you meant this watch. And I said, no, no, I, I didn't see it. So we started talking and he knew I was wearing the oyster quartz at the time. So he knew the oyster quartz and he was a very nice collector. And it just shows you that not every collector goes and flips them. Actually, the collectors don't. Uh, the flippers do. So th it's good that collectors can get their hands on these watches at retail. So it's, it's very, very good. And he enjoys it and everything. And he will never sell it, uh, hopefully. Uh, but he, so far he hasn't. So it is a very, very cool uh, to see a ceramic uh, Daytona at a retail store that was bought at the retail store. I was just too late to get there. He bought it months ago. 
Uh, but it was very convenient timing, and it was cool. I got to share this with you. What a great watch, and I never got to see the ceramic in person uh, before this. So I thought there was a glide lock, and there was not. So there's no glide lock. It's just that uh, quick release at the end of it. So you get an extra five millimeters. Uh, on this bracelet. So actually really, really cool. It fits great. It's everything a Daytona should be. And I just got a brief interaction with it. So I couldn't review it or anything, uh, but it's very cool. I'm going to show you, uh, I only took a 10 second little clip of me uh, having it on the wrist, but I, this is a still shot I'm talking. It's very uh, exciting though. So I do want to, that's why I wanted to share it with you. Uh, not a cough out, not, you know, I'm just put a Daytona at a retail shop. It really was there, and uh, that's before I hear the comments saying, oh, no, why didn't you buy it? it the reason I didn't get it is because uh, somebody else purchased it way before me, but it's very, very cool watch. I think it's really nice with the ceramic and uh, even the black. I like the white, uh, and I think most collectors do. They do trade for a bit more of a premium, but the black is just a gorgeous black. And uh, it's such a special watch with that complication. This is the second Daytona, actually third, including that other uh, uh, factory uh, bezel, the Leopard. But uh, the third Daytona I actually got at the store. Uh, if you remembered my last video, uh, I actually saw the Daytona white face. So I actually saw that, that but it was the two-tone. This is the full steel, and the two-tone doesn't have ceramic. Uh, but I'm going to flip you into the clip. And then I, so this is the actual uh, wrist roll really quick, really nice. It's super special. I wish the lighting was a little bit better so you can see Uh, really great watch. Uh, nothing compares to the Daytona to me. And it is uh, really, really cool. Uh, but I would love to know your opinions. What do you like the pre-ceramic or ceramic? Uh, I would love to know that. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear that in the comments down below. Uh, I hope you don't get mad because it wasn't an actual a stock item, but it was in the store and it was purchased in the store and it came back to the store. So it's a uh, very few times you see a Rolex Daytona bought at a store and the collector comes back with the same watch. Very, very cool. And uh, it shows you the modesty of the collector. He was very, very nice. He was polite. He says, go try it on. You know, you can film and everything. And I think that's what uh, the watch world needs. You know, they need these people that are extremely nice. Some people are not like that in the watch world, and sadly, and this is one of the best official dealers I've been around, They're really, really nice, this is on 5th Street in Arizona, and they treat you really well, and I've been to 80s where it's not as nice as this, so I think definitely the experience helps a lot uh, out on what you perceive as the watch, and what it is, uh, and how, how much you like it, uh, I think uh, you should be getting A-plus service, I think it should be very nice, you can go in for a chat, if you bought a watch or even if you like, I'm not, I haven't bought a watch at the store yet, uh, but I'd still talk to the uh, Rolex the, and everybody there is so nice. It's really a pleasurable experience every time I go. And that's why I keep making these videos and sharing it with you. So I think it's definitely a really nice thing to do. Just go in there and see a uh, official dealer, have a quick uh, chat. Uh, you know, talk about things, but don't, I, I personally don't go and say, hey, do you have a Submariner in stock? Because while I was there in the short period, maybe an hour, max 45 minutes uh, while I was chatting, five, 10, I, I think up to 20 people came into the store individually and asked for the Submariner. That's unreal. They, the official dealer told me uh, they actually get 88 phone calls a day for this Submariner across the U.S., even international calls. So it's really, really crazy that uh, these watches are selling so fast, uh, and it's just mind-boggling. But also at the same time, it's frustrating for ADs because they want to give it to everybody. And this store, I know I've talked to other uh, managers at other stores, and they're actually you know, they're upfront about it, uh, some other ones. But this store has a list. They're at the list. The list is actually max uh, capacity. They're up to 400, I think, or 4 or 200 on the list. So it's very, very high. And it's up to four years on the waiting list. So you're going to be there a long time, depending two to four years. If you actually get on the waiting list, uh, I definitely uh, the, there's some stores that say they'll put you on a waiting list. And that's uh, that's just a lot. It depends on which retailer you, you work with. This one is really, really good. Uh, they're very nice to everybody, but you are still going to be have to wait 
Uh, they can't do anything about that. They wish uh, they, all Rolex was available, but uh, it's not like that. And uh, so the uh, official dealers, they, ha- they don't even know what's coming. So it's very, very uh, frustrating for them and for the consumer. But at the same time, they're extremely nice. Uh, uh, every person that comes into, they're very polite. And uh, I just wanted to uh, say that because when I make these videos, they, they have a quick chat. Uh, and uh, I, they allow me to film, and everybody is very, very nice to me. So I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I would love to hear what you think about my uh, experience down in the comments below. Have a great day, and I will catch you in the next one.